Hey you guys, it's Peter, and I'm back. Of course I'm back, I'm not going anywhere. Based! I'm really not going anywhere, because peekaboo. I'm YouTube famous now. Available summer 2023, the album, Dad, Shimmy Shimmy, AF, <clears throat> Rock on Gold Dust. Based! Woman! Based! How are you guys doing today? Okay, so there are a couple things that I want to talk about in this video today. I want to talk about Jaclyn Hill permanently leaving Twitter. Apparently she has permanently left Twitter. Um, and I also want to talk about Jessica Braun because I talked about Jessica Braun the other day not disclosing appropriately her affiliate links for Amazon and she has came out and responded in, I believe, a very appropriate and eloquent way. She commented on my video um, and then she also put up a statement on Instagram, so I want to talk about that in a second. Before I get into that though, and <laughs> in all honesty, I'm kind of a little bit nervous to talk about this and I kind of went back and forth about... Should I even address this? Um, you know, it's not getting a lot of traction and blah, 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 whatever. But I think it's important for me to address this, especially because, um, and, and, and some of you out there may hear me talk about this and be like, I cannot support Peter anymore, yada, yada, yada. Okay, I understand that. I totally understand that. Um, but I am not somebody, like many of the people that I talk about, that runs from accusations and things like that, okay? I'm 51 years old. I've been sober for 28 and a half years. I'm act actively involved in therapy. I talk about that on a regular basis. Just saw my therapist a couple days ago um, on Thursday. Um, I work with a sponsor and I do inventory on my life. I've done so much inventory over things from my past. Um, I talk about that in a lot of my videos. So I'm not going to run and hide from uh, different things that are put out there about me, okay? So there are a few things that I want to address in this video. I know you guys are like, oh my God, what is going on here? This is getting kind of deep. Um, so it seems that the harder that I come for people in talking about James Charles or Colleen Ballinger or Trisha Paytas um, or Jeffree Star, Shane Dawson, whatever, that there are a few people out there, I believe it's one or two people, maybe that are acting like they're five or six people, but I could be wrong, I don't know, that um, are attempting to discredit me from things that I have said or things that I have done in my past, okay? So that um, I won't speak about these things anymore, or they're trying to make it seem like I'm just as bad as these people, whatnot. So I want to address these things in a video to you guys and I want to explain to you what has happened and take full responsibility for it. Okay, so the first thing is that I um, tweeted out some things and, and the reason why I don't really talk, want to talk about this and kind of the reason why I'm nervous about it is because many of you um, don't know about this. This happened four years ago when it, it came out. Um, and so it's like, okay, I'm going to bring everybody's attention back to this again. Then people are going to hear about it. It's not going to make me look great and great light, right? But I do think what's important about it is that I really have changed and grown as a person. And, um, and I'm not just saying I'm a changed person in a video. I'm going to explain to you how I've changed and grown over this. Okay. So about four years ago, it came out that I had made some absolutely disgusting tweets back in the day. Okay. And, um, I think they came out in like, they were like 2010, 2011. Okay. I, um, and so every time that I make a video, uh, a couple of these people throw up these tweets that I made, you know, 12, 13, 14 years ago now at this point, right? So I just want to address this directly um, for people that aren't aware because they continue to tag people on it. They close friends of mine that are fully aware of this, they tag in it. Um, they continue to bring attention to these tweets and things like that. So I just want to make everybody aware and um, explain this in a video that four years ago, I made a video. I sat down very calmly and I explained that if I were to call other people out in a video and not address the tweets that were being brought to my attention that were disgusting and gross, um, then I would be a hypocrite. So I sat down in a video, um, it's 25 minutes long, I just watched it back, and it's called Addressing the Tweets, and I read almost every tweet that was sent to me at that time. I think there was one that I missed um, in there that was something that I said 
about um, a pageant, but there was one other comment that, or one other tweet that keeps on being brought up about pageants that I did address in the, in the video, both of which were disgusting, and, and I said that in the video, um, but I went through each tweet, and if I remembered the context, I explained the context. If I didn't, I said I didn't remember the context, but I took full accountability for all the tweets and said that they were disgusting, okay? So I don't know why we need to continue to bring up these tweets over and over and over again. Um, when <clears throat> somebody comes out and takes accountability fully for their actions, something that I have talked talked about in videos and I feel like that they, they have adequately, I'm just a commentary channel you guys, I'm just making commentary on what I see out there in the world, okay? So when a YouTuber comes out and they take a uh, responsibility for their actions and then I see after that I witness growth and change from that person like I have done in the past with people um, and like for example with like Manny MUA and Laura I acknowledge that they came out and they took ownership and that they had changed and grown. It wasn't until recently with the podcast okay and they're continuing Manny's continuing to follow Colleen Ballinger that I said that I started to question that okay but before that I had said that I felt like they had made a lot of changes in growth. I don't have a problem getting on a video and acknowledging people changing and growing adequately if I feel like they, they do, right? Okay, I have done a lot of work on this. First of all, I got in a video and I addressed literally every single tweet that was brought to my attention, okay? Number one, that's four years ago. The video is still up on my channel. You can go watch the video, okay? Number two, I sat with my therapist and I went through each and every one of those tweets, okay? And why I thought that that language was appropriate at that time and, and why I thought that it was okay to speak that way or why I thought those things were funny because today I realize there is nothing funny about those things, okay? There is, it was gross uh, language that I used. There was nothing appropriate about it, okay? I said it in my video four years ago, but since then I have done a lot of work in my anger from the past, my lacking emotional sobriety, me thinking that certain jokes were funny that weren't, me thinking that it was appropriate for me to speak that way to people when it wasn't. I've done a lot of work on that. And I believe that through my videos and through my interactions with people and my making amends to people, I have demonstrated that, okay? And I have not repeated those things since then, okay? So since 2011, I have not repeated many of those patterns, right? And, um, you know, and, and I want to just say this. There was a YouTuber um, by the name of uh, Zach Garcia, Adventures of Zach and B, and he came out like years ago, and I kind of liked this response, and he said, for those of you, because this was the time that everybody was pulling up tweets from back in the day and stuff, and he said, you know, for those of you out there that are going to look for, I can't remember exactly how he said it, but he said something to the effect of, if you're looking for something problematic in my past, you're probably going to find it, and I just want to take responsibility and apologize for it now, right? Um, and, and that's the case. And that's why, to be honest with you, in a lot of these situations. I try not to focus necessarily on specifics of the past. Um, I try to just look at the main issues that are going on with these people that I'm talking about. Um, but needless to say, nothing that I, I said in those tweets was appropriate or right. I addressed it in a video and I've done a lot of work on it since then, right? Okay. So that's the first thing that I wanted to say because I, I don't want people to see those things being brought up and being like, oh, Peter never addressed this. So you can timestamp this video and date stamp this video that Peter again, four years later, is addressing it and talking about it. And you can go back and you can reference my video from four years ago. If you go watch the video, you will see I take responsibility for every single tweet, okay? The same things that I ask other people to do. I go through each tweet and talk about it and address it. And there was nothing right about those tweets, okay? Nothing whatsoever. That's the first thing I want to say. The second thing was that somebody put up a clip, okay, of me in 2017 having a conversation in a live stream with a YouTuber at the time that was 19 years old, okay? And in the live stream, I'm talking about another YouTuber and the fact that, um, he and I had had this conversation and that at that time he came out and said that he was a virgin and he was in his late 20s and I flippantly made a joke to this this YouTuber that I was talking to and I said oh are you a virgin and you can tell in the clip that it's a joke right that's no excuse I, I shouldn't have said it right now 
I immediately took the clip down today when I saw it. I got on my YouTube and I took the live stream down. And people are like, oh, Peter's running from this. Peter's trying to hide from this. I am not trying to hide from this, okay? I don't know why I asked that question at the time. I don't know why I thought that that joke was appropriately. But I'm not going to be a Colleen Ballinger, okay? I wasn't in a group chat with somebody asking them seriously if they were a virgin. You can tell in the clip that I was joking about it, okay? Not to mention that this is a YouTuber that I later, in another live stream, gave some very, in a live stream of theirs, gave them some very serious life um, experience advice on when they were older. They, and so, anyway, I, this person has completely changed their career. They are no longer on YouTube, and I don't have a relationship with the other YouTuber that I was talking about. I am not going to have those two people dragged into somebody trying to discredit me. That is, that is not their responsibility. They don't need to be involved in that, especially when somebody else has built an entire different career, okay, um, around something else and isn't even on YouTube anymore, to have this clip floating around that is going to bring a lot of attention to them. If they want to come out and they want to speak to it and they need me to address it further, I have no problem to do that. But the reason why I took the video down, the live stream down, which the person said on there, well, there's clips of this. We can still post clips of it. Post clips of it if you want to. I will tell you the reason why I took the video down was because I do not want those two YouTubers, one of which I, we have not talked in a very long time with, but the last time I was civil with, and the other person has a completely different career that they have worked very, very hard on, okay? And they are not even on YouTube anymore. So I don't want them dragged into somebody trying to discredit me and being used, okay, and weaponized for something that they are not involved in today whatsoever. So if they want to come out and speak about it, I, that's fine. They can come out and speak about it and their experience, and I will address that. But that is why I took that clip down. It's not because I'm running from it. I have, I don't, to be honest with you, even remember doing that live stream. It was in 2017, okay? So do I think it was appropriate? No, it wasn't appropriate. But if I'm going to sit there and say that Colleen Ballinger is asking people at Christmas parties about being a bunch of virgins, then I better get in a video and I better explain why I thought it was okay at, in 2017 to be asking somebody that was much younger than me if they were a virgin, even if it was joking, okay? And it wasn't right, and it wasn't correct, and it wasn't appropriate, and it wasn't a funny joke, okay? Period. End of story. But I'm not going to run from it, because I'm going to tell you what. I'm going to continue to call these people out, and I'm going to continue to hold these people accountable. And if that means that I need to come out and I need to address my issues, then I will continue to come out and address my issues as well, okay? Okay? So that was the second thing that I wanted to talk about in there. And um, I'm trying to think of what else. The tweets and that, I wanted to make sure that, that was explained because I have a feeling that that person is going to keep on posting this stuff because they're like, oh, this person, he, Peter ran and took this down and he's hiding. I'm not hiding, okay? I'm trying to protect these people. If they want to come out and they want to share it and feel like that there's something problematic about it, I have no problem getting on video and addressing it, okay? I am no Colleen Ballinger and I am no James Charles. I will address it fully and I will take full responsibility for it. And like I said, there was nothing funny about it. There was nothing appropriate about it. It wasn't right, okay? But it was meant, and if you watch the clip, okay, which you can't because I've taken down, but I'm sure the clip is up there somewhere. It was a quick two-second joke. I was talking about somebody else and that I had just found out because this person had said to me in a live stream that they were a virgin. And I said, oh, I just found out that he was a virgin. Are you a virgin? Ha ha. And then we moved on to the next thing. And this person actually starts talking about their boyfriend, right? Okay. The third thing I want to talk about, because apparently this is a huge issue. I don't know why. <laughs> But it does make me look like a complete hypocrite. So I, I was going to talk about this in my vlog today, actually. And then I started getting emailed about it. And I was like, okay, I just need to address this in a video. So I um, bought these drinks the other day. And I showed them in a Peter Does Stuff video when my grocery store haul. Um, that, uh, and and I, I kind of want this to be an example to people of how you can address situations and not, you don't have to run from them, okay? So... Because I think it is important to come out and address these situations, you know? And the other thing is I want to say, like, I'm so tired of getting tagged and stuff where people say, you don't confront Trisha Paytas, you give Trisha Paytas a free pass, blah, 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 whatever, okay? I am not making my channel a Trisha Paytas channel and addressing everything from her past. Trisha Paytas has an extremely problematic past. I have talked about many of the issues of Trisha Paytas in the past and how they are problematic. I have held her accountable 
so much that people are saying to me, you are not fair to Trisha Paytas, blah, 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 whatever. In my video yesterday, I even said that Trisha Paytas has never come out and made an appropriate apology for all the problematic things she does. You don't need to tag me in any more videos and any more clips, okay? I'm not a Trisha Paytas channel. I'm not going to continue to make 15 tr Trisha Paytas videos about these things, okay? Y'all, I think y'all know, I don't like to talk about deep, dark issues anyway. So, the fact that I'm talking about these things is because I think they're important. Do I think it's important to talk about Trisha Paytas and hold her accountable? Yes. I've done it in many, 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 many videos, okay? Somebody even said to me, or said in a, a tweet, that Peter Mon said at one point, and I don't even remember saying this, that you could hand Trisha Paytas a piece of paper with everything that she had done on it, and she would say, I don't know what you're talking about. I believe that, right? Which is why I encourage Trisha Paytas at this time to come out and address, like I did with my tweets, every single thing that she had done, right? And take accountability for it, because then people could see over time that she had grown and changed. I believe in growth and change in people, but you have to demonstrate it to people by your action. You have to take accountability, and I believe on my channel, I have shown that. I believe that I have been a witness of that, okay? And that I have shown how through inventory and therapy and addressing things and working through the issues, okay? Not just acting like they didn't happen, but to actually look at them and say, why did I think that this was okay at this time? There was nothing right about that, right? Okay. So don't run from it. And I'm not going to continue to call people out if I'm then going to be confronted with things and not address them. So I bought these drinks in a Peter Does Stuff video, these coffees, right? And the coffees had hemp in them. I didn't realize that when I bought them. And I have gone on, I think now in two videos on my vlog. So these are people that very closely watch every single thing that I say and they blah, 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 you know, they, they repeat things that I say and whatever, right? Okay. So, um... They, uh, so anyway, these drinks had, uh, hemp in them. And I came out in two different vlogs, I even think in a Peter Dusta video, and I said, I'm not going to drink these drinks. I did come out at the end of my Peter Dusta video, and I said, because they have hemp in them. And I do not, and I know this isn't going to make a lot of sense to people, I actually even just talked about this last night, um, in my vlog, before I had gotten the emails, okay? I said, um that uh like i don't like i don't wear anything that has like you know an alcohol label on it like absolute vodka or you know moosehead beer or bud light or anything i don't wear anything that is representative of alcohol as a person in recovery okay i also do not wear like t-shirts that have cannabis leaves on them or socks that have cannabis leaves on them because as a person that was a total pothead back in the day i don't want to have anything that's representative of that right and i said in there that's the reason why i don't use cbd oil i don't use any of that kind of stuff and people are like well you can't get high off that stuff i'm fully aware of that okay i'm fully aware i can't get high from wearing a hemp t-shirt i'm fully aware that i can't get high from using many cbd products like oils and lotions i get that it was a stance that i made back in the day that i wasn't going to support these products okay now i've talked about it in two videos so this is the hypocrisy of peter mon that i have no problem owning okay it was brought to my attention that in several videos years ago in hauls and in talking about my daily routines and things like that that i had used hemp's lotion products and when i read the first email i got several emails about this when i read the first email i was like oh my god that's so true i did and so i went up to my bathroom and i found that i have this hemp's uh pumpkin spice and vanilla chai lotion okay i also have this hemp's uh mint and sugar and spice nutmeg lotion and recently i think it was at christmas when i went to ulta i bought this hemp's cookie dough lotion which i've actually never even used you can see up uh, see i've never even like i think i dipped my finger into it for the haul but i never used it and this is a different one uh body butter not that it matters if i use it or not i dipped my finger into it for the haul but other than that but i did used to use these products back in the day i did <laughs> I don't know why I thought that that, I, like, I didn't have an issue with using these hemp products. And to be honest with you, I have absolutely no good excuse for it, okay? So I just need to own that I, my total hypocrisy of getting in a video and saying that I don't support hemp products and I don't use hemp products and blah, 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 when it is obviously that I used a lot of hemp products back in the day, okay? I don't know why I thought that that was okay. I don't know why I said that. Um, but, I mean, I have fully supported this brand and have bought many products back in the day. So I guess that 
makes me a huge um, hypocrite. I, I do stand, and I don't know why, if it, I don't know what, I don't, to be honest with you, I have no clue, okay? And I don't know how I completely forgot about those lotions, but I just need to own it. I just need to own it and be like, yeah, that was a hypocritic statement to make. Um, a hypocritical statement to make and that I said that blah, blah blah whatever but I do try to do a good job of not using products or and I know this doesn't make sense to people because people are like well hemp's products aren't gonna get you high I'm fully aware of that but I do try to do a good job of not using products that endorse the lifestyle that I used to have okay so I'm not gonna run from that allegation either I'm gonna come out and completely just own it and say yes I think that that was hypocritical because apparently I had forgotten but I used to, I don't know if you can see but these are like so dusty these bottles but I did used to use them I used them a lot I used them for years I even like there there's other bottles that I have upstairs there's one that has a smiley face on it I mean there's I like tanning lotion of hemp I mean there's a lot of products of hemp that I've used through the years right and liked them and, and really enjoyed using them so that was a very hypocritical statement for me to make of saying that I never used hemp products and I never stood behind them so I just need to own that and just say I don't know why I said that but to the, I try to not use products that are representative of my old lifestyle or my old lifestyle of being a pothead and being an alcoholic and being a pill popper and things like that you know like th that's just my truth and i don't know why i totally forgot about those products that i used okay so um i guess i'm a hypocrite when it comes to that i don't know but anyway I wanted to address that because I know that uh, people are asking me. I mean, I literally got like emails from people that are like diehard watchers of my vlogs. People that I know that are very supportive of me. And they were like, hey, I didn't want to put this in a comment. Um, but <laughs> you said that you didn't use hemp products, but you used to use hemp products because, and I was like, oh my God, like I totally forgot about that, right? And um, when I went and looked underneath my sink, I have several hemp products. So I wanted to come out and address that. Um, I don't have a problem coming out and addressing issues. Um, I'm not going to continue to stop. I'm not going to stop talking about these people, okay? I believe it's important to hold these people accountable. If these people want to come out and talk about their issues and address their issues in a very similar manner, um, I will take that into consideration and I will judge them accordingly. So, um, you know, I'm not going to say that I want somebody to come out and address their issues and then I'm not going to address my issues. And I want to make that very, very clear, okay? So, um, most of anything that has ever come out, I have addressed in a video at some point. Um, and, you know, I, I want to make that very, very clear. You know, there were years ago that this uh, live stream that I had with Paige Christie, I got very nasty in the live stream and people said I was gaslighting her. I said in a video recently that I made amends to Paige for that. I did a lot of inventory over that. I talked in therapy about that. There's been a lot of things that I've taken to my therapist previous and this one um, a lot of things I've talked to my sponsor about and we have worked through and I've looked at my part in that which is part of what you do in inventory and I have seen that there was nothing right about my behaviors from the past but I'm not gonna run from those either and in my video where I talk about my tweets I said that I was glad that they came out because it is an opportunity to continue to grow and change as a person and that's really all I ever want for people and I say that in my videos on a regular basis you know that I want people to continue to grow and change but to do that, I believe that you have to look at certain things and address them, okay? I'm not afraid to do that. I'm not afraid to, I mean, these are things I know, right? Like, I mean, except for the hemp solution, I kind of forgot about that. But these are things that I know, like it was my life, right? I'm 51 years old. I want to continue to grow as a person because if I continue to grow, then I am going to enjoy my life further. Um, and if people want to discredit me based on things that I've done in my past, then I'm just going to have to continue to address those things. Um, but I'm not going to run from them. I'm just not going to do that. Um, because that's what a lot of these people do. And they think that you'll just forget about it and whatever. No, I'm going to come out and I'm going to own my shit. And I'm going to address it. Because I can't expect that from other people. And, and not do what I'm, what I'm asking of. So I want to make that very, very clear. And I'm sure that this video will just set off a whole other list of things that I probably already addressed in the past. And most people have forgotten. Which is very interesting to me of these people that want to post all of these clips. And I don't have a problem getting on, on a video and naming who these people are. Um, but at this point, I don't feel the need to do that um, so that you guys can go and see their Twitters are dedicated to, di to discrediting me. Um, but at this point, I don't feel the need to do that. Okay, my battery died. And then I sat down and I started to film. And my neighbor from across the street, she brought me uh, new cucumbers. She brought me cucumbers the other day. And then she brought me two new cu cucumbers from her garden at her friend's house. So, um, you know, which is kind of interesting to me. It's like, 
I know that there are people out there that don't like me, okay? Um, and I totally understand that. Like, that's something I learned a long time ago. I don't like everybody. Not everybody's gonna like me. And that's okay. I get that, right? Um, I know that people think that the people that I talk about in my videos, whoever they are, that I really take issue with them or I have like a hate boner towards them or whatever. It, it's not, that's not the case, right? Literally, when I finish filming a video, I turn off my camera and I go to listening to an audiobook or, um, you know, watching a TV show or hanging out with my husband and my dog. I'm literally just a 51 year old guy that lives in the middle of Indianapolis, Indiana, that hangs out with my husband and my dog and my best friend and goes to recovery meetings and talks to my neighbors and they bring me cucumbers. <laughs> okay, that's really who I am. I know that there are those people out there that think that, like, you know, I'm this huge con and I'm trying to be so manipulative and um, I'm trying to like deceive people behind the scenes that's not it okay I mean that really is not it and um, you know I will continue to try to do work on myself and be the best version of myself that I can possibly be all right now I will tell you this that after this video I don't plan to continue to respond to every situation that they want to bring up because this will not be enough for them they will continue to bring up things to continue to discredit me okay which at that point then you know I, I may need to um, discuss who these people are and things like that which is totally fine okay um, but you know one of the things that is interesting to me is that they can dig deep into vlog that I did five years ago and find little clips of things where I came out and I was showing a hemp lotion and things like that or they can find things that I said years ago but they don't find the necessity to go in there and find a video um, where it was dedicated video, okay? Not just a clip where people say to me like, oh, well, Trisha Paytas, you have to hunt and find it. I mean, I mentioned in a video, I said I would come out and publicly apologize to Trisha Paytas if she has done a dedicated apology taking responsibility for all her actions, okay? To this day, Nobody has linked that video for me. So for all of you out there that want to say that Trisha Paytas has apologized for the actions of her past, please link that video, okay? And no, I'm not talking about where she's sitting in a car, she's sitting on her, you know, in her bedroom, and she just kind of spits out something about like, oh, I feel bad about what I did. No, I'm, I'm talking about a dedicated video. I did a dedicated video. Trisha Paytas can do a dedicated video, okay? So that's what I'm talking about, all right? But um, it's interesting to me that these people can find these clips, which means they watch me very closely, okay? Because they are so, um, and I don't do this, okay? I don't do this with people. People usually send me little things and whatever. It's not like I'm doing deep dive investigations of the world. I think I've made that very, very clear, okay? But it's interesting to me that they can go back and find vlogs of mine from four and five years ago where in two seconds of a vlog, I said something, and they use that as an example of proving that I'm a hypocrite, which maybe I am, okay? Um, maybe that's something that I need to take a look at and take some responsibility for. But then they can't reference a video from four years ago where I came out and addressed almost every tweet that was sent to me. And even if there, if I didn't address, if there are more tweets out there that I didn't address, they're all disgusting and gross. Okay. And I've worked on those tweets because there have been, since that video came out, there have been other tweets that I've taken to my sponsor and taken to my therapist and worked on. Okay. So, uh, I just want to make that very, very clear, you know, like I try to be fair to the people that I talked about. I think that you guys know that. I think that you guys know that I try to be as objective as possible. Um, and I think that that's just fair to ask in return. So that's what I wanted to say about that. All right, let's get into, at, I don't know, 20 some minutes now, but I do want to talk about this in a video. This will be a long video. Um, I do want to talk about Jessica Braun um, and the fact that she came out and she made a statement addressing this the other day. So Jessica Braun also commented on my video. Um, I'm not, oh, here it is. She said, hey, Pierre, this is where I, I said that Jessica Braun, I was very sad because I like Jessica Braun of Jam Beauty. Um, I really like her. I like her content. And, um, you know, and then on her Facebook page, she when she did the video, she did disclose appropriately. Um, now, she explained on her Instagram story that after all of her links, she said these are prime day links, right? But she still didn't disclose it appropriately because it wasn't right next to the link. But she did come out afterwards and explain in a, uh, another Instagram story that those were all Prime Day links. But she commented on my video and she said, hey, Peter, you are totally right. I did an awful job disclosing in my IG stories for my Prime Day sales I posted the other day. I had a verbal disclosure toward the end, but it wasn't enough. I am always on top of disclosing, being very clear when I do sponsor content, etc. It was a genuine oversight this time. I've also just posted to my Instagram apologizing, and I'll be very clear moving forward. 
Regarding the post about how to get to a link to open an appropriate app, because I read that part in there, I got I get floods of DMs regarding how to do this, which is why I reshared something I created previously. Cindy, love your way. I've always been a follower of yours. We are fellow Hoosiers, right? Yes, we are. And I really appreciate that. I appreciate A, her taking responsibility for it, and B, her being kind about it. There was no reason why she had to be nasty about it, right? And she, I mean, or there was no reason why she had to be nice about it. She could have been cutthroat and been like, girl, you called me out in this video. I'm unfollowing you. I'm done with you. She didn't do that. This, to me, shows me class, and this shows me growth, okay? Because she, she addressed it appropriately. She then came out and, um, hold on a second, let me find this. She then came out, where is it at? Um, and she posted on her Instagram a statement that she made. Here it is. Um, it's right here. And she said, hey, hey, lovelies. One thing I pride myself on is pulling back the curtain on sponsorships and the back end of content creation. I've also tried to be very clear regarding sponsored content, affiliate links, ex affiliate links, etc. I did a terrible job being clear about my Amazon links in yesterday's IG story for Prime Day being affiliate links. I should have made it more clear. I'm working on this and next time I'll mark each link as affiliate. For the record, nearly everything I link from any site is most likely an affiliate link just like most other content creators this is because it takes work to make the links and this is part of my job i know most of you know this but it uh, bears repeating from time to time thanks for your support as always fantastic response okay i think that she did this adequately and appropriately and i'm really to be honest with you impressed and i've learned from this and that this is how you address things going forward so thank you jessica because i've learned from you today i really really appreciate that okay and um i think this is impressive that this is a you know a bigger beauty influencer that has no problem coming out and owning it you know i mean how many times have we called out jacqueline hill for not disclosing to affiliate links this is the first time that i said something about jessica braun or that i think most people have said anything about jessica braun and she came right out and addressed it right away. Why is it taking Jaclyn Hill two years, three years to address these things, right? Okay, I'm impressed by that. So then I want to talk about Jaclyn Hill. And Jaclyn Hill, she has left, she has left the, the, the building. So where is it at? Hold on a second. I had it all pulled up. Um, and this was sent to me by, oh shoot, where was it at? This was sent to me by Marva John on Twitter. Hey, John, how are you? Go follow Marva John, M-A-R-V-A-J-O-H-N. Marva, John's got, all, I think it's Marvelous John it's supposed to be. John's got all the receipts, okay? So, anyway, I asked him the other day because I couldn't see Jaclyn Hill's Twitter. And I was like, did Jaclyn Hill block me on Twitter too? Because <laughs> she blocked me on Instagram, right? Or is she, has she just left Twitter? I'm confused. And he said, no, she made an announcement that she left Twitter. And then he sent me um, this receipt right here. Okay. And it says, for those of you asking why, dot, 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 I deleted my Twitter because it is, because it is toxic. I don't know why people are so cruel on that platform specifically. Because you can't control it is probably why. It's one thing to question someone's character or not like their content. But every day I see... You're fat. You're a liar. I can't wait to watch you go broke. Your husband, Mary. Oh, by the way, the people that discredit me, um, uh, a lot of their tweets are body shaming people and things like that. So just so you guys know that those people out there that are trying to discredit me, they are also people that are in the business of body shaming people uh, over and over and over again and things like that. They're a really nice group of people out there, okay? So if I do call you out, I'll, I will be reading those tweets, just so you know, okay? Um, they, but these people say uh, to Jacqueline, she says, but every day I see you're fat you're a liar I can't wait to watch you go broke your husband married you for the money nobody cares about you you're a piece of SHI chud etc enough is enough thanks for being so great over here IG family I love you guys and now she's over on threads I don't know why she thinks it's like Daniel Prada deleted his Twitter and then went over to threads okay and people are saying that threads is supposed to be less problematic I mean it's just a matter of days before threads is as problematic as Twitter I'm already seeing things over there that are as problematic as Twitter right so it's just a matter of time before threads gets just as problematic as Twitter it has to and I'll tell you why okay because part of what has kept Twitter alive for so long and I don't love this this is why I don't tweet out a lot of stuff okay is because the toxicity is kind of what people love that live on Twitter 24 hours a day, okay? So if Threads is just this nice place where people are, pick, you know, posting pictures of dogs and things like that, hold on a second. Um, like if you go to my, uh, hold on a second, damn, damn it, Janet. Uh, oh, did it already go out? I guess it did. I was going to show you my Instagram stories <laughs> where I post pictures of like uh, vintage little houses that animals live in and pictures of dogs with their tongues out and things like that. If Threads moves, to, and I don't get a lot 
lot of traction on those pictures that I reshare on uh, on Instagram. But if Threads moves in that direction and becomes so nice and nice, it's not gonna last. It's just not because people. A lot of people really love the anger and the toxicity of Twitter. Even though we all say it's angry and toxic, a lot of people like that, right? So if Threads doesn't kind of move in that direction sooner or later, it ain't it ain't gonna move. Okay, nobody's gonna follow it. So anyway, thank you, Jessica Braun, for coming out and addressing it and dressing it appropriately and with class. I, I really respect that. And I think that that is a lesson for all of us on how to address things. And Jacqueline Hill has left the building permanently. So anyway, let me know what you think about all that in the comment section below. I love you guys so much and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.